Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this uh, September uh, 21st, uh, Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. Now, we're going to get talking about what's going on in Cook County. Cook County is near Chicago in the United States of America. And what's going on there is uh, it's launched a free money UBI program already. And this UBI program, they're going to be offering people payments of $500 to $3,250 a month. Uh, now, they're saying that a lot of the people in Cook County uh, are going to be uh, eligible for this. Uh, it says uh, uh, it's eligibility is open to anybody 18 years of age or, or older with a household income at or below 250% of the federal poverty level or $58,000 for a family of three. So if you earn less than $58,000 a year, if you're family three, you're going to be eligible for this. Approximately 36% of the people in Cook County will therefore be eligible for this program of universal basic income in the United States of America. So this is happening right now. It's helicopter money. But I'll tell you what I'm expecting. I'm really expecting them to expand these programs in the very near future uh, after this economic crisis that the Fed is generating. And... Uh, the thing about it is, is there's no way out of this. They're putting the American people into poverty. And what are they going to do? Central bank digital currency, and they're going to airdrop money to the, all the people in America. It's already happened. If you say, well, this can't possibly happen. Do you remember the stimmy checks? Yes, it has already happened. But this is going to be a little bit different this time. This is going to be more of a continuous program that extends out into the future into infinity and it's going to destroy the dollar ultimately but because you cannot feed everyone in America just by having them stay home and collect a check in the mail because they're going to be utilizing products and things that that cost labor and time and effort on the people that make products and you just can't print money out of thin air and expect it to pay for these products and chase these goods and services without the price going way up. Anyway, let's talk about Ukraine for a minute. The situation in Ukraine has taken a bad turn. Uh, they're going to be putting referendums to the people in the eastern side of Ukraine. And uh, they're going to be doing that for, I guess, the next little while. A little while. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. But when, if those certain areas vote to be part of Russia, then annexing these areas, well, what happens then is Russia's territorial sovereignty comes into play into all of this. And basically the Russians are committed to protecting their territorial sovereignty. And so this means that uh, they have all options on the table, including the nuclear option at a certain point. Uh, so this is a big escalation that could lead to uh, ultimately to the war uh, becoming, ultimately it could become nuclear. And this is a threat to all humanity. Uh, we all want this war to end, you know. I think everybody out there wants this war to end, but this war is growing now, bigger. Russia's mobilizing at this point in time. Uh, they're going to mobilize. People think that, oh, uh, Russia's got nothing. Well, Russia has only used a small percentage of, of, the, of the fighting power that they have up till this point in time. And now they're mobilizing this from a, from, from a special military operation into something much larger, which could be, a actual, could be an actual war. Of course, war declaration, I don't think it's been made yet. Uh, anyway, 
this is a very tricky situation in Ukraine right now. Uh, now, we're going to talk about silver price today, which is uh, up at 16 cents at $19.41. And we're going to take a look at gold right now. And gold is up $6.40. You know, uh, if the whole world's at war, war implements take a lot of silver to make, you know. Every time they drop one of these things from an airplane, boom. It's like 100 ounces of silver gone, scattered over all, everywhere. Electronics take a lot of silver. An awful lot of things take a lot of silver. And the fact is the world is actually running out of silver because it's not running out in the sense that we don't have any more silver. It's running out that that it's running out in the sense that the silver that is there that's left is much harder to obtain. It takes more work. It, you, see, first off, you have to understand how they get silver is they have to crush rocks. It's inside the rocks. Little tiny bits of silver here and there inside the rocks. They crush the rocks down to a powder. And then what they do is they have to separate the silver from the rocks. Basically, that's how it works. And it's taken more... They've dug out all the rocks that have the most silver in them. And now the rocks that they got left got less silver in them. And it takes more work. It takes more, uh, more rock to get less silver, less and less silver. In other words, they've, they're eating out all the world's silver deposits in the good years, what you would refer to as the low-hanging fruit. They're sucking that all up, and now they're getting into the harder stuff, and it's going to take more energy to get it out. So therefore, the cost of silver has to go up at a certain point to keep up with mining production costs. Otherwise, they're just not going to have any new silver to make all these electronic goodies. And of course, with the electronic goodies, they just pass the things like cell phones and things like that, they just pass the price of the silver that's in those components onto the consumer. And they'll continue to do that. So they don't really care. Well, they do care what the silver price is, but they can afford to pay a whole lot more. And so eventually in the future, looking at a long-term investment, silver is going to be the investment of a lifetime because the price can only go up and up and up. I mean, the price was... $50 an ounce, for crying out loud, way back when $50 would buy something. I, I mean, and now, here we are, years and years and years later, and the price is way down here. Get real, it takes hundreds of pounds of rock, crushed rock. And you know, it's not easy to crush rocks. They use a machine called a rock crusher. That's what it's called. But it takes a lot of energy. And they break down quite often. They need parts. You know. And that's more cost passed on to the miner. Anyway, moving on, we're going to take a look at cryptocurrency today. Now, see, cryptocurrency is a lot easier to produce. Depends on the cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is not that easy to produce. And so... In my mind, because it's not that easy to produce, because it takes a lot of electricity, because of all those factors, Bitcoin, it costs about $7,000 to make a Bitcoin of electricity to mine the thing out of the Internet. That's what they actually do. They mine it like you mine precious metals, except it's a computer doing all the work. But that, people have to do the work, too, because they have to set up the computer and then they have to monitor it while the computer digs into the internet. And then they have to pay the power bill, that the power that the computer uses. And that power bill for one Bitcoin is around, and, and also labor costs, is around $7,000. So this kind of puts a little floor. Now some of these other coins they can produce for practically nothing. As easy as they produce fiat currency. But what I'm trying to tell you is Bitcoin is not one of those coins that you produce for nothing. It costs a lot of electrical costs to get to, in. And and people say, well, can't they just make more Bitcoin or whatever? No, they can't. Because it's already been set in the computers. There's an algorithm or whatever in the computers that control Bitcoin. Where it's already set that they have to do all that work to get a Bitcoin out. 
it's a it's a network that's established and it can't be changed. It can't be changed by anybody, and it requires all that work to get one. And and I should know. I mean, I have tried. I've tampered with it in times gone by, you know. And I know it takes a lot of work to get one of those things out of the network. A tremendous amount of work. Now there was a time when Bitcoin first started where it was easy. You know. Pity I hadn't have figured that out way back when it first started, but I mean, I can tell you guys that it takes a hell of a lot of work to get even a tiny little fragment out of the network. And work, I mean, the computer that has to has to be monitored, like I say, and it uses uh, gobbles up the electricity, and it and it's work. You have to. You have to set the computer up, and then you have to keep your eye on it, what it's doing. And they have these big places where they do this, big. And the heat that comes off of those places is tremendous. But they have thousands of computers in, like, a big room, and they got a guy walking back and forth in the hallway monitoring each one. And he actually has to do that job of monitoring maybe a 1,000 Bitcoin computers that are mining, and the power's coming into the building. It's like, hmm, you know, and the wires are hot. And the heat that comes off of them, and they got big fans and stuff pushing the heat out. This is Bitcoin mining operations. This is what it's actually like in the real world. But now, you know, like I say, that's why Bitcoin has a substantial value behind it is because of these mining operations and, and uh so I tell you guys, Bitcoin has a floor of around seven thousand dollars. I'm talking about mining production costs. Though they go below that, then the miners will break off the network, and Bitcoin have a big problem if they go too much below those seven thousand. That's the same way with gold and silver. The mines that produce silver, you know, if it goes down, like they have a small profit margin here at this nineteen dollar and fifty cent or whatever it is price. But if the Bitcoin, if the silver price were to go down to like, say, eight dollars and fifty cents, there'd be no, no, they would just close the mines down. And say, hey, we can't mine silver for that. Okay, Dow Jones today's having an up day. But you're gonna find that these up days are until the Fed changes direction. This, this is going nowhere really. Yeah, you might have a little tiny update. It could even switch to a down day before the day's over. You can't trust it, even on its up days. It's an unstable market. It's ready to collapse. Uh, taking a look at uh, crude oil, it's uh, eight cents. It's moved. Uh, Eighty-three, eighty-six today. Oh, the Dow is at thirty thousand nine hundred thirty-seven today. By the way, move index is one thirty-four sixty-six. And we're looking at bonds and rates today. We're looking at falling yields. We're looking at a 10-year at 3.55. And uh, we're looking at a 30-year at 3.56. And the yields are only moving a little bit. Only about one basis point on the long end. In the middle, we got rising yields still on the middle. This is increasing the yield curve. I mean the yield inversion. Yield curve inversion. U.S. dollar index, way too high, 110.72. And the dollar is going up today. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.